So I recently upgraded my CPU from the Intel i7-13700KF to the new 14700K. I know, massive upgrades, but it did take us one step closer to having the ultimate gaming and productivity setup. So let's take a look at what the CPU is, what's different, and then of course, if you actually need one. Let's get into it. So just for clarity, this unit was gifted to me by Gigabyte AOR South Africa, but they don't get to see this video. It's not a sponsored video. So everything is my own thoughts, but I just wanted to say thank you. I really do appreciate you guys. Now, before we get started, let's actually do a quick rundown of my entire setup. So in my setup, I have the Gigabyte B760i AORUS Pro DDR4 motherboard, which was actually released in the time of the 13th gen, but with a quick BIOS update, it works with 14th gen as well. So if you have a 13th gen motherboard and you wanna make the upgrade to 14th gen, just know that it is possible to just keep your motherboard. It does make it easier and cheaper to make the upgrade as you don't have to go out and buy a new motherboard and CPU. Now you can just go and buy a new CPU, but just make sure to update the BIOS before you actually switch out the chipsets. Then I have 32 gigabytes of 4,000 megahertz DDR4 RAM as suggested by the motherboard name, but you can also go for a DDR5 board if you wanna have a more future-proof setup, or if you just wanna make use of the faster clock speeds on the RAM of DDR5, then of course you can just do that and just use that. But for me, I have a DDR4 board, so 4,000 megahertz is more than enough for me on my setup. Then in terms of PSU, I do have an 850 watt power supply, which is fairly needed for these newer Intel chips as they do go above 100 watts when put on load. And if you have a bigger and newer GPU, then those will also add a lot of load to your entire system. So if you have big GPU, Intel i7, you might wanna get a big PSU. And then in terms of cooling, I do have a 240 mil AIO, which I would suggest is sort of the minimum that you can go with. If you can, I would say just go for a 360 mole rad, but I haven't had any sort of overheating issues with the 240 mole. And then of course, if you wanna go air cooling, just make sure that you get a sort of a beefy air cooler because that is a lot of wattage that these chips are producing. So you do need a lot of cooling for them. Now, when it comes to my PC, it needs to be more than just a gaming machine. It needs to be able to edit videos as well as do general productivity tasks like write scripts do your general sort of emails as well as doing some graphic work on the side as well. So that is really important for me. Now what that means is that this PC needs to be fairly well equipped all around. I need to have a decent CPU and GPU as well as a lot of RAM because editing videos and photos do require a lot of those resources. And because I do this on a daily basis, having a setup that can make me edit videos quicker, export faster is just a massive win for me as it saves me a lot of time. And then of course, having it equipped for all of those tasks, make it good for gaming as well, which is just another win in my books. But having it be good for gaming might be the main reason that you actually wanna go out and buy the CPU. So the i7-14700K comes equipped with 20 cores and 28 threads, which is actually a fair bit more compared to the previous gen 13700K, which only had 16 cores and 24 threads, and the 14700K is also slightly more power efficient as well. The 14700K also now supports up to 192 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, up to 5600 megahertz, has a larger cache size, and has a 6% higher boost frequency at 5.6 gigahertz instead of just 5.3 gigahertz. Now the overall spec of the 14700K wasn't really what people were expecting, and honestly, in my opinion, this feels like sort of a 13th gen upgrade. It feels like it's sort of just the K of the normal edition. It shouldn't be its own generation, but here we are. And this is sort of really apparent when it comes to gaming as well. For general gaming, for the general person, if you have a 13700K or a 13700KF, you're probably not gonna see a big difference when you actually do the upgrade to the 14700K as the differences are very marginal. So for the general gamer in a sort of general situation, doing the upgrade from the 13700K to the 14700K might actually not be worth it for you. The changes are usually between one to 5% performance game in terms of FPS when playing games, which once again is so small that it doesn't really actually warrant an upgrade. So if you are someone that's just looking for a CPU that is good for gaming, then I would highly suggest maybe looking for a secondhand 13700K, which someone is trying to sell because they just upgraded to a 14th gen, or just going out and seeing maybe they do have a lot of specials on the 13th gen because they're trying to get rid of old stock. Or if you have a 13th gen, 
just don't make the upgrade because you're really not going to see a massive difference in gaming performance. But where the 14700K really shines is in tasks like Blender, where if you have more cores, you're able to render faster. That is really where, if you want to be making an upgrade, that is sort of where you're going to see the most difference between the 13700K and the 14700K. With productivity tasks like this, you do see more of a gain between the 13700K and the 14700K, and Gamers Nexus made an entire video on how they compared the 14700K to a bunch of different CPUs out there, both old and new, and they even compared it to AMD. So if you're on the fence on whether or not you need to buy Intel or AMD, I would highly suggest going and watching that video. I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. And you can just watch that entire video, see all of the benchmarks and a lot of different programs with a lot of different CPUs, as I'm not actually able to do comparisons between a lot of different CPUs, as I don't have a lot of CPUs on me. So if you wanna see that and compare it to a bunch of different ones, just go and watch that video. With this current generation, if you're looking for a CPU that will give you the most bang for your buck in terms of gaming performance, then it breaks me to say this, but Intel is probably not the best choice for you. AMD has got a bunch of great CPUs out there on the market today, which are a whole lot better for gaming and comes in at either the same price or slightly cheaper compared to their Intel counterparts. But that doesn't mean that Intel isn't good for gaming. The Intel i7 14700K is still a great option for gaming and a great option if you're gonna be doing a lot of productivity as well, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of Blender tasks as this CPU is just amazing for that. And for me, for general video editing, doing some graphic work and playing games, I've never really struggled using the CPU. So for me, it is still a great option. And if you're looking at getting one, it could be a great option for you as well. But I think what this video boils down to is that if you have a 13700K and you're just using it for gaming, don't make the upgrade. But if you're gonna be using it in more productivity tasks like Blender especially, then yes, it will definitely be worth the upgrade. And then until next time, cheers.